Okay, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. The video was getting too long, so I had to make another one. Okay, so continuing our foiling video series. Um, I know somebody's going to ask me about foiling embossed images, so I did that real quick. So embossed images. So I stamped out the image, and then I heat emboss it with clear embossing powder. I have my mini mink back down to three, so we're waiting for that. And then the laminator is still on. We have some mink foil here and I got a new piece of paper for my carrier sheet okay and then this one's gonna go through the laminator I don't like doing this method out of all the foiling because I feel like the heat embossing is a hit or miss. So we'll see here. I picked a nice solid image because I thought that would help out. So heat embossing with the mink. Again, stamped image. Yeah. This is pretty much my result every time I try to do a stamped image. Now, I know part of it is because it went through the carrier sheet, but I just do not like doing stamped images. Can you do it? Yes. Does it come out great? Not usually. So here it is through the laminator. Oh, a little better. I'm going to say laminator wins that one. But again, a big part of the mink not working out was because of not having a proper carrier sheet. So for heat embossing, we are giving that point to the laminator. Okay, so earlier when I paused the video and my camera didn't like it, was I was trying out the Heidi Swap. Paint and Heidi Swap ink. So this first one is Heidi Swap ink. Press through a stencil. Um, this looks like it's still wet because it has a glossy sheen to it. However, it is dry to the touch. It's not tacky. I did take my heat tool to it to kind of speed it up. So we have some foil cut here for that. going to cut down this. Maybe that'll help it go through the machine a little better. Here we go. And we're going to do a little piece through the laminator. And again, this is the Heidi Swap Reactive Screen Ink, which is white. I like this stuff. It's pretty cool. And this is pressed through a stencil. That's pretty neat. That's really nice. And it gives it some dimension. Now, I did a video a few months back where you pretty much get the same results using Mod Podge. Just so you guys know, you don't have to buy anything fancy. Okay, now let's see what it looks like from the laminator. Pretty good, pretty good. I would say these are tied. They both have full coverage looks good both ways so 
for the Heidi Swap Screen Ink. I'm going to give that one a tie. That worked out great. And that's going to come out, like I said, very similar if you use um, Mod Podge. You don't have to buy any kind of special stuff that's out on the market. All right, for the last one, same stencil, but I use the reactive paint. Now, the reactive paint is... It's drying, but it's still tacky in some spots. I did take the heat tool to it. You'll see the difference between the reactive paint and the reactive ink when it comes to the final results because the reactive paint was very thin and more liquid, so it kind of ran under the stencil a little bit. It was very sticky and very messy. I did not like it. The reactive paint, I think, would be a great product if you wanted to have that watercolored foil look. Take a brush, pour it out on a palette, take a brush, do some brush strokes, or if you want to watercolor an image and then foil it, that's going to be great. But in terms of stenciling and stamping, I think it's just too thin of a medium to hold its design. Um, so different usage, uses for this versus the screen ink, which was a little more heavy bodied. Yeah, that's a little messy. The foiling came out great. It's just the reactive paint, like I said, seeped under the stencil. Same thing. So these are both also tied. Same full coverage on the foiling from both the laminator and the mink. Just not a great product to use in terms of if you want a precise detailed image, you want to use something different. I mean, look at the difference between reactive paint on the left and screen ink on the right. You just get more details with the screen ink. So I'm going to give both of them a tie on that as well. And, okay guys, I'm really surprised because these results came out fairly different than when I did it on my first video, when I had really bad camera angles. Um, even though I think the mink overall did a better job, here's the toner die cuts, that was a tie, the Anna Griffin, um, printed papers, the glitter, heat embossing with a stamp, and reactive paint and reactive ink. The laminator held its own. That really surprised me. Same results with the reactive paint, same results with the reactive ink. Came out a little better if you want to do stamping and embossing. Again, I think that was a fault of the carrier sheet, but still. The Anna Griffin toner papers and the toner die cut. So at the end of the day, if you don't have a mink, you can do all of this foiling with a good laminator. So there's my video series on foiling. I still have some more experiments I'm going to do, guys. Watch my previous video. I'm going to have a giveaway with some goodies. You can see that in the haul video I posted today. If you have any questions, please post them below. If there's anything else you'd like me to experiment with, please post that in the comments. I'll be happy to look at it. Um, pass this information along. And we're going to have a giveaway soon. And I will give you guys more information on that later. Thanks for watching. And keep on foiling. <laughs>